excited to have Coach Maddie Taylor on. Maddie, how you doing? I'm doing really well, Ryan. How are you? Awesome. Hey, I just want to say thank you for coming on last minute. Uh, we had a little bit of a time conflict with uh, Coach Matt, uh, Matt uh, Carey. We're hoping to bring him back on um, so you guys can hear him. But uh, today, I'm just I'm happy to join with with Coach Matt Taylor. I was planning on having you on at some point. It just got sped up a little bit with with the conflict there. But um, now, Maddie, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we met. I mean, you played for Marion for a, a first year uh, for your freshman year, and we met. We first met then, correct? Yeah, we met on your. Uh pre-game skates on Friday, your skill yep. session. And what I thought about you the first time, holy cow, I was a little scared. <laughs> Why is that? I remember you were just kind of really, not intense, but really motivated to teach the skills and get going with it. And then I was like, this is a pre-game skate. What are we doing? Like, it was like we're going a thousand miles an hour out there. And then once I got to know you, I know you're a really good guy, joking around a lot of the time. So, you know, it's funny because like, I don't. I don't think that of myself, right? Like I'm, a, I'm. When I'm on the ice, I'm just like, oh well, we have an hour. Let's go. Like we gotta move. You know what I mean? Like, and like, you know, coming from, I was, you know, you also gotta remember, like that was some of my first times on the ice with you guys as well. So like, um, I think for you to say that, like, I don't think you guys also realized the the nervous the nerves that were on my side of it too, because I wanted to make sure you guys had a good skate, right? I like. I didn't want you guys getting off the ice being like, well, that was a, that was a waste of time. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And it's kind of funny because I was the only goalie out there for those skates. Yeah. I remember drill, drill, drill. And then you'd come up to me at like 40 minutes. Like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm a little tired, but I'm okay. You know, that's funny because like, so I, I remember constantly coming up to you and the other goalies being like, are you guys, are you guys okay? Are the shots coming too fast? Like, you know, tell me about it. And I was really worried because like, you guys were like some of the drills I had you guys doing. You were seeing shot after shot after shot, and it was quick. And I and then you know some of the sometimes the boys would ring one off your dome, and then you would just you just stay in the net and like okay let's let's do it again. And I'd be like man like I feel I felt like I felt genuinely horrible for you guys. Like I in think the there was net. one state I got hit like probably six times in the face in one drill. You're like okay we're done with practice. We're just done. <laughs> Yeah, and that's and that's one of the things that's funny about these views from the bench that I've been doing lately. Like, so I had Stanway on and I had Lewis on, and you know Tyler and Jim, they're fantastic guys. And yeah. they in those two interviews that I did with them, my entire concept of practice and goalies changed. Like it was, you know, when they started talking to me about it's not about reps, it's about quality and things like that. And it talked about drills and things like that because that was one of the things that with you that really. And at those Marion skates, it really, I, I'll be honest with you, Maddie, I, I didn't really care how the players were shooting at you because I was so wrapped up in the drill. I was so wrapped up in making sure how their edges were looking, how they made that turn, how their heads were up and things like that, that when it came to the actual shot part of it, you were just like, <laughs> you were fresh meat, man. Like they just let it go. It was like one timers from the top of the circles with a rebound coming next to you. And it was fun. Like, it's a lot of shots really helped me out in the long run, kind of getting used to the college hockey speed. Yep. But it was a little crazy at times, but I really enjoy the skill session. And then I know we talked about before, after talking to you, the drills changed a little bit too. Yeah. And that was, and that's something that too, like, you know, as a coach, you, you, you sometimes forget that you can just go to the players and say like, Hey, like, what are you seeing? And that's, and that's uh, after talking with Tyler and, and coach Stanway and things like that. And then, with you guys, I'm, I'm glad you guys as, as the Marion goalies felt confident enough to come to me and say like, Hey, like y y you shouldn't be having 40 shots in the, in, in a three minute span here. Like, we're, we're, you know, we're dying here. Right. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's really big. And, and that's one of the great reasons why I'm, I'm really happy that you're on right now is because you're a first year coach. Like you just joined, um, you just joined our staff and a lot of staffs around Fond du Lac last year. So you're going to bring this unique perspective to everybody out there about, about coaching and, and stuff like that, that I'm, I'm hoping new coaches can hear and then learn from. But before we get into that, uh, give me a little bit about your playing history. All right, a little about me playing and growing up. So I'm originally from Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, yep. Really small town. Great hockey town, though. That's kind of what the town revolves around. We got uh, NA team here and a Division One team. So it's kind of yep. cool to experience both of those in our hometown. So started like most kids, started at the age of four and five. Uh, playing intro to hockey, and then next year was my first year mites. I actually played on a triple A mite team, which they don't have anymore, which is kind of <laughs> insane they did back then. 
And I was a goalie from the get-go. Um, I've never played player once in my life, so I've always been a goalie. Uh, played my youth career all the way through Fairbanks till I got to 18 AAA, and then I moved over to Baltimore, Maryland for the uh, Skipjacks out there. Um, yep. It was a brand-new team, first-year first, first year team I joined. So first year away, moving away from home and first new team, it was interesting. A lot of life lessons, a lot of learning, a lot of growing up. Mm-hmm. And then had a good year out there, enjoyed the East Coast, really had a fun time, good coaches. And then after that year, I moved to Colorado Springs for uh, another year of AAA hockey for the Pikes Peak Miners and uh, mm-hmm. an APHL, which was awesome. You're going to showcases every other week and playing in front of a ton of coaches, really good hockey players like Austin Matthews played in that league. Yep. So, and then after that, um, I ended up playing tier three junior hockey in Pikes Peak also. I love the area, I love the coaches, just couldn't get away. Yep. And after that, I got recruited by Marion University, and I played two and a half years there. Yeah. So you don't hear your story a lot anymore. We talked about two things that I find super interesting. One is the Mike AAA, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, now looking back on, you know, like that, what, that was like, what, you know, 15 years ago? More, uh, yeah, almost 20. Yeah. Give or, give or take. And you look back on, like, you know, Mike AAA now, like, it seems so crazy to think that we actually did – might triple a full ice hockey and you know the kids were to me yes like now you see the adm and and cross like hockey and how much it's actually it's it's how much skill set it's producing in kids that to think that that's what we did back then was like you know hindsight you're like like that doesn't make any sense right it was usually like one kid that was really fast as a might skating the puck all the way down the ice and then nine other kids chasing them yeah and then and that's what i was uh, telling people too is like the kids who are good at UA is not indicative of them being good at UA team. Like usually the kid who's really good at UA is just bigger than everybody, right? He's more physically mature. He's taller. He's got a better shot, but it doesn't make he's going to be better at 18. But so we see it all the time too. Yeah. it's um, And then the other thing too, you said that was pretty interesting is that you, you, you took on goalie right away, right? It's like, yeah. like you, you very rarely see that. Now I know on my U8 team, um, I specifically dodge jamborees and things that have goalies because I don't want them. Like, I, I, I want my kids to develop as skaters first and then decide if they want to become a goalie, you know, and, and go that route. What made you decide goalie that early? Um, I don't really know. I just remember an intro to hockey. My parents always told me I would never get out of the net. No matter mm-hmm. what, if there's a goalie or not, I would always be there. And then my dad played a little bit of high school hockey out east, and he was – honestly a backup goalie but he mm-hmm. loved it and then kind of going to the college games here i fell in love with the gear and then the goalie actually i became friends with him now who was the starter for them i just loved his last name and i just loved his number and then i was hooked yeah. from that day that's awesome so and uh like i like i said before you're a first year coach um give us the background of why you wanted to get into coaching a and then b what are some of the teams you've coached since you've gotten into it so it kind of came out of nowhere for me. I've always kind of realized I wanted to do something with hockey after I was done playing or during, even when I was playing, but I really didn't know what it was. And then I kind of was talking with my college coach, Zach Gaynor, and then knowing you, I got into it and I wanted to get back to the game. I really enjoyed working with the kids and seeing them develop and yep. grow their game. And when they win, it felt better for me when they won games and tournaments than I than me winning a game. It was yep. awesome to see how much hard work they put in that pays off. Yep. So that was one of the awesome things about coaching. It really got me into it, and I got hooked quick, as you can see. And you know, me and you worked a lot together last spring and yep. this summer. So, and then some of the teams I was really lucky to coach some awesome teams. I kind of had a crazy run for my first year of coaching Coleman Cup, and then uh, Team Wisconsin, then the Hockey Factory Go Sevens. Then I was lucky enough to coach the state champions, St. Mary Springs, in Division Two in Wisconsin. I was gonna say that's a. Uh... That's quite. I was. I was. We were talking about it before we got on live. That you, you've had quite a run this last year. You know, insane like, kind of. <laughs> if I think about it now, I know it's like you know you 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 know like you won the Coleman Cup the first year. You've 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 had a you had a really successful team Wisconsin team, and then in addition to that, you you had a good run with Hockey Factory. But then to top it all off, back in was it early March before kind of we got into the situation we are now. You you are you in this. Uh, you know, on the bench with the St. Mary Springs, got a chance to win that state title. So, um, you know, like, congrats. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> um, look at the draw, I guess. I know to say, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of you fell into the right place at the right time. So, 
I'm not taking anything away from you as a coach. I'm just saying it's uh I gotta thank you for that too. You kind yeah. of brought me in and started all that a lot of it. Yeah. Um, but give me give me your first experience coaching. Like what was the what was like one of the first things running through your mind at the first practice you were at when you were on the ice with a bunch of youth kids? I honestly was extremely nervous. Um mm-hmm. these kids were like I, I believe they're eleven or twelve. And I'm a 23 year old man and I'm nervous to get on the ice with kids. Uh, but it's kind of like getting out there and just getting yourself your feet wet. Um, it's okay to make mistakes as coaches. I've learned yep. everybody's going to do it. Um, but I was extremely nervous. I kind of stood up to the side, just kind of watched, maybe stick handle the puck around a few times and just watched, really observed and wanted to yep. get, learn what you were, it was with you, I believe, and wanted what you were teaching and the other coaches. And then as I got more comfortable with it, it's like you just got to find what you feel you're comfortable with and go do it. You got to be that yep. confident. To just go do it. And kids love it when you're involved and you're having a good like if you have good energy, they're happy energy, which I believe fully. Yep. You, you, you said something right there is getting involved. Right. And that was one of the things that I noticed about you right away is that when you came on to the ice those first times you were looking. And that's what it's what I think. Uh, it's important for head coaches to do is actually give their assistant coaches roles, especially if it's one of their first couple of times on the ice. And I, I remember specifically talking to you about, you know, coming on the ice and I was like, your role right now is the goaltenders. I just want you focusing on those two goalies, warm them up, getting them ready to play, getting their mind right. And things like that. And when you got on the ice, um, I remember, you know, I don't remember if you remember, but it was a funny story from when you got there as you found out what one of my pet peeves were for assistant coaches, like right off the bat. And you kind of just said it like you were off to the side doing the, 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 the sideboard lean with your arm on the board. Oh, yeah. Just watching. <laughs> and I remember, I remember skating around and I, I, I don't remember who the assistant coach, I don't remember it was Grant or Rex. And I looked at him. I'm like, what's this kid doing? And you were, and I think whoever it was, was like, he has no idea. Like, don't go. And I walked over and I was like, Hey, get off the boards. Let's go. And you were like, Wait, what, I remember you like looked at me like deer in headlights, and I was just like, I was like, oh crap, pretty much like I gotta get going here. This is not just come hang out time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's one of the things that like I found funny was like, you know, that's my that's my pet peeve. That's one of the things that like drives me nuts because, like I said, you had a role, role right? And the role yeah. was I want you with the goalies right away. And and when I get on the ice, I want to move. I want to go. And and you've since picked it up. Like you're 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 a very intense coach on the on in practices, which I love now. Like you're you're getting the kids fired up. You're, you're getting you know the, the the parents in the stands are looking down like well, this guy's loud, right? And you've 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 picked that up stuff up right away. And one of the things I really appreciate about you is that like I don't think you would dare ever like do the sideboard lead or anything like that again. Like it's I know better now. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the best thing. You know, next year we're gonna be walking into it. We're gonna have a brand new coach in, and that coach is gonna do the sideboard lean. And then I know you're just gonna look at me and be like, "I got this." I'll take <laughs> over this one. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like right, you got involved right away, and that's the that's the most important thing that I think new coaches should do is have that communication with their head coach about <clears throat> a role on the team, uh, and then and then embrace that role. And if it's something that like you were very familiar with, right? You knew how to work with goalies. You were, you know, you, you knew how to, to, you know, get them warmed up from your experience playing. And, and that's what I always tell other new coaches. If you're given a role that you're not quite confident in, like kind of do what you did with me, right? Ask questions, right? Ask questions or find a drill that you've seen before that mm-hmm. relates to that topic and roll with it. Yeah. Because it's important to like, and that's the thing is you get in these roles and, and I don't think kids realize that we're nervous as coaches, even, you know, they might be 12 or 13, but we're nervous because we don't want to, we don't want to like mess it up. Right. We want to make sure they're having an amazing experience and that's where our nerves come from. And, um, but at the same time, you got to remember these kids are, they're just as nervous. Right. And there's only, you don't really have an hour of practice too. Yeah. So it's go, go, go. And you don't want to take time with your mistakes too. So it's, it's a little nerve wracking at times, especially if you have like a trial and you have a hundred kids out there. Yep. Yep. So now that you got on to the, you know, ice as you're coaching, what were some of the first kind of lessons you learned as a coach on the ice? And, and like I said, you've had some great kind of coaches that have helped you out there. So uh, give us some lessons you've learned. I think the first one is be a listener and be yep. able to learn. Um, we kind of talked about being able to listen, but being able to go out there and watch other coaches and what they're talking about and how they run practices and how they teach the game. Mm-hmm. The game's changing so much, even from when I was a 10-year-old to where I am now. It's The game's completely different. Mm-hmm. So being able to learn and react to the situations and watch other coaches, how they do it, I think that's been extremely helpful for me. Okay. 
Yeah, that's a that's a thing. It's like I, I, like I always do it too, and that's the other thing too is that head coaches can learn a lot from their assistant coaches, right? Like, yeah. I learned a lot from you, and you have a very calm demeanor with your with your goalies, which I think they love. And um, you know, being on the bench, I have a tendency just to look at the goalies and be like, "Stop the puck!" Like I don't you like have one job. Yeah, you have one job. Stop the puck, right? But as you get into the psychology of the game and stuff like that, like one of the things that you opened up my eyes to was was it's not just about stopping the puck, right? It's about what happens during the play, what happens during practice, and it's the overall game. And you can't just you can't just look at your goalies and say stop the puck. It's it's got to be more, right? So that's that's one of the things you helped me do is just calm down, right? Like <laughs> I think a lot of that's come from becoming a coach, also too. Yep. Um, being a goalie, I hated being yelled at as a from a coach or being told other things. Just like let me be calm and have fun with it, and that's how I want to teach my kids or goalies that I work with. Just go have fun with it. I'm not going to be there yelling at you if you let it go, and it's going to happen. No mm-hmm. one's perfect as a goalie, so. But also just being able to be confident and calm. And when I started playing, still playing hockey and coaching, it's I'm looking at teams running systems or running a four check. I'm like, this makes so much sense now what they're doing. Yeah. And you, you brought up, you know, being calm and stuff and having fun. What is some advice you possibly have for a coach that uh, that has for a goalie that after he gives up a goal? You know, because sometimes when a, a goalie gives up a goal he should have had, you always see the, you know, the, the coach does, or the player will, goalie will look to the bench. And sometimes you see coaches react a little differently each time. What is some of your advice to coaches when you see that? Um, I'd just be positive about it. Like, yeah. like I said, a goalie's mistake is more on a wider scale than a player's mistake. Mm-hmm. As a coach, you're not going to get on every player that makes a mistake, so don't get on your goalie. Yep. Um, if they let, do let that tough goal in, might be a one nothing game or something, or this week one slips in, just look at him, clap for him, like cheer him on. Like You don't have to be a cheerleader, just, but know how, that you have his back no matter what or her back. Yep. Just be that positive role model or positive coach where he's like, okay, I'll get that one back now. Now instead of if you're tough on him or yelling at him, now he's putting his head down, thinking about that last goal, not the next 20 minutes of the game. Yeah, that is one thing, too, I've also um, kind of have been learning is that the more tense goalies are, the more, you know, they're they're not able to control. Like, it's just one of those things. The more relaxed the goalie is, the better he's able to perform. And so, like, going into a, a period where, you know, you have two minutes to talk to a goalie at the end of each period, what are you, some of the things you're saying in the goalies? Well, one thing is I never talk about goals during the game. Like I just said, you want to forget about that. Mm-hmm. But a big thing for me is I talk about how we feel and what are we seeing out there. Is there yep. something that like alarming to the goalie and how can I help him with that? Like they're they're shooting high every time. Okay, let's take another step out of the crease. Let's challenge some more. Yep. Or they're rushing the net hard. Like yeah, let's get rebounds in the corner and then just go have a good period. Mm-hmm. It's not like you messed up that period. You did this wrong. Let's just keep rolling. Especially if they're having a tough game. Just keep fighting it, keep battling, go back to the basics. Yep. Um, and then, so being a first-year coach, too, and we talked about what was the most nervous part about being it, you know, for your first practice. Let me know, what was one of the more nerve-wracking parts about being on the bench the first time? Well, it's kind of funny. My first time on the bench was with you, um, and I was on the forward store. Once again, I never coached forwards at this point. So I was a little intimidated. Just the first probably period, as you remember, I was just opening the door. Yep. Like kids would come on, kids would come off, open the door. I was like, I'm doing my job. Great. And then I remember you kind of saying something like, you got to say something to them. Okay. And then I remember after that, I was like, I just got to talk to them. They're young kids. They're having a good time. They're having a blast. Help them out. If they have, like I said, if they have a tough shift, don't be hard on them. Tell them what they kind of did wrong. It's like, this is what you should have done, or this is where you should have been, and stuff like that. So after that first period, I think I adjusted pretty well, but I remember just didn't say a word, silent the whole time, silent during warm-ups, and just opened the door. I, I I I remember this. I remember like I remember even going down to the other end of the bench and talking to the assistant coach, being like, I don't think Maddie said a word. Like he, he is and he's like, What do you mean? I'm like, literally the only thing I hear from his side of the bench is the door like going up and down. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, I also remember like telling you that, like, hey, man, you got to talk to the kids. And, and I remember you being like, okay, like, what should I say? I just said, just ask the kids what they saw. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, that's all you got to do. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, they'll tell you. Like, they're going to give you an answer, right? And yeah. 
I go, that generally, you don't have to tell them what you would have done or maybe what's right or wrong or how you'd have done it differently. Just ask the kid what they saw because then what generally happens after that is they're going to be able to internalize their shift, right? And they're going to be able to talk about it. And then hopefully they can figure it out themselves, right? And I think that's the most important thing about coaching. And it's why I love new coaches. All new coaches have to ask is just what you see because kids – they're going to learn it on their own, right? And they're, then they're going to, if they're the ones that are actually coming to the conclusion themselves of what happened that shift, like they're going to retain that information a lot longer, right? So, like, yeah, for sure. And, and that's the thing with new coaches. You don't have to, you don't have to like know the game in and out to like have a kid learn from you. All you got to do is have the kid figure it out by himself. And the way you do that is just by saying, like, what'd you see? Like, what did you see? And then after he gets done telling you, you got to be positive with him, right? And that's what I told you next. I'm like, Every time a kid tells you something, just high five them at the end of it and tell them good job. Like that's it. Or and some of the stuff you hear is hilarious from kids. Yes. It's I've had some awesome stories like, what did you see? He's like, I saw a lot out there. Like, what are you talking about? And then it just goes on for like five minutes. You're just like, all right, we'll talk about it after the game. <laughs> yeah. It's some of the stories you get and you just get kind of look sideways and kind of shake your head. But that's the thing, too. And you, you did a fantastic job of that. And that's one of the things I'll give you a lot of props for is that when you yeah. you came in you were always asking the questions for the kids, you know, like, what did you see? Like, did you have fun out there? Like um, your upbeat personality on goals we scored was awesome. And that's another thing too. I don't think a lot of, a lot of people realize that you, when we scored a goal, sometimes I thought you got into it a little bit more than the kids did. <laughs> well, you're the one to talk to here. <laughs> well, I know I, get, I love seeing goals scored, but that's a, it's one of the great things when kids see you get that positive and happy on the bench for something they did right. But the other thing too, I loved you do you doing is you brought a lot of that college mentality with you where, mm -hmm. you know, you know exactly what I mean when I talk about like blocking a shot, like you, you see a block shot in a college game or a junior game, like it's that a huge louder. Deal. Pardon? It's a huge deal. Yes. And you brought that energy. Like I remember like you were just as loud when, you know, guys, kids on our team would block shots and, 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 you know, and do the right things instead of like them scoring a goal. And uh, I think a lot of the kids started feeding off that, you know what I mean? Like a block shot here, you were banging on the boards, high five them coming off the ice and which allowed the kids to realize like that's, that's, that's part of being a team game. And it's, it, it's infectious because the rest of the kids started loving it too. I, I mean, our TW team, man, whenever we blocked a shot, that place would go, <laughs> bench would go nuts. I think the parents started to get into it too. <laughs> yes. At some point, uh, it was like, holy cow. Like when we scored a goal, it was almost silent. Yes. Um, but then you like, you've had a great run your first year. You, 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 <laughs> you, you, you um, and give me a sense of, you know, why were some of those teams successful that you were on? Well, I, those, I had a great privilege of winning the Coleman Cup with you my first yeah. year. And then with Team Wisconsin, we had a great team and a great kind of season with that. But mm -hmm. one team that really stands out to me is St. Mary Springs. Um, like, I joined the team as a goalie coach, just yep. like kind of with you. And I kind of fell in love with the kids and coaching the kids right away. Um, it was a great group of kids. And after the first, like, I think week or two, I went to coach John Welsh. I was like, I want to do this more. I want to be more involved with the team. And, well, that, that team, they – I believe they lost four games all year, three games all year, and had a great run to the state title. But that team was – they all worked hard. They all mm -hmm. had one goal in mind, and that was to win a state championship from the first day. And they just put the work in. There was no complaining about drills. There's just – we got practice for an hour 15. Let's go do it. And when it's game time, we played our game plan. It was just a really cool thing to see kids just put the work in and see their outcome be good for them. It's a lot of work to win a state championship or just any championship in general. So seeing them put the work for a full season through some adversity, but really come up on top at the end. Mm -hmm. And in your first year of being a coach, what were some of the successful traits that you've seen that some of your coaches that you have coached with have and, uh, and, what, and what made them successful? Are you just asking the question like, as coaches? What I've seen yeah, as coaches, like what are some of the things you, what are some of the traits you've seen in coaches that made them successful as far as, um, you know, in teams they've coached, which makes players, you know, better and things like that? I think one thing is being able to adapt. We've talked, touched on it a little bit before, but the game's always changing. Yep. If you're not able to adapt, you're going to kind of get left in the dust, I believe. It's, I believe the game's changing every year or every even half year. You see different stuff all the time. And, being able to teach skills, I think, is a huge important thing as a coach. Um, if you, you're always growing your skills, no matter what age you are, it's extremely important from mm -hmm. mites to the NHL. Um, 
one thing I did, the big lesson I took away from my college coach was it starts from the top down. It starts from the coaches down through the team. Like you said, coach gets excited about a block shot. The rest of the team sees that and it kind of trickles down. So I kind of taken that aspect saying it starts with my energy, my positivity, and goes all the way down to the last player on the team. Yeah. That's the other thing too is coaches. It's not just, it's not just the, you know, the excitement and things like that too, but you brought up like from the top down, like the coaches, they're, they're the ones that I think starts with, right. When it starts with accountability, it's, it, it, you know, with trust and things like that, because if your coach has the trust in his players then that filters down to like, you know, everybody, if it's excitement that you're talking about too, he has excitement that trickles down to everybody. And, um, you know, you see a lot of good coaches that what they're able to, and why they are successful is because they hold their team to like, and they hold their team to a certain set of standards, but generally they hold themselves to a higher set of standards, right? Yes. Yeah. Sure. And, and I think that it helps, helps a lot in coaching, which, which, you know, sometimes like, you know, if you're going to tell your team, like be there at nine o'clock, don't show up at nine fifteen. <laughs> like Yeah. Even nine Oh five, be there on nine o'clock. Yeah. And that's, and that's something that I think is, which kind of is what you're getting at too, is that it's whatever you're doing as a coach, you have, and whatever you're preaching as a coach, you have to follow that too. Cause if you're not following that, like your team's going to lose trust, like, and then they're going to see the excitement on the bench, but they might not believe it. Right. It might be, you know, yeah, they're going to think fake it's excitement, yeah. fake hearing. <clears throat> and that's one of the things too. I don't think uh, coaches or parents sometimes give kids enough credit for it. They see right through that stuff. Like, Oh yeah. Those, those young kids are smart. They know if you're, if you're telling them, like, if you believe in what you're talking about or not, they'll see it. Yeah. And then the other thing too, I've, I think, you know, I've coached intro. I've coached, I've coached some of your like skill sessions at Marion and things like that. And I will tell you that in my experience, one of the things I've picked up the most on is that the younger the kid is, the more they can tell if you're, if they're really like, you know, like buying into what, you know what I mean? Like you're buying, like, like what you're selling is what they're buying. Right. If, because yeah. if you, if if you're not like excited to be there, and if you're not like happy to be on the ice, the, the younger the kids are, they pick up on that quick, right? Because they're just there. Like my intro kids, they're just there to have fun, right? And if they they know if you're there just to like, ugh, like I don't want to be here one of those days, then their their level of excitement is going to go down. But as you get older, it's you can I, I don't want to say fake it more, but a lot of the motives for kids of being at like the pee wee skates different than you know an intro to hockey. The pee wee there, they're gonna have kids there to learn and get better and, and and be better. So you might be able to fake some enthusiasm. They're gonna they're gonna deal with it just because they're they're there to get better as well. But at the youth levels, especially intro and you hates man, you you gotta want to be there. You gotta like want to make the kids better. You gotta want to make it fun. If you can't do that, those kids are gonna see right through that, and then they're not gonna want to be there. Then it turns into a disaster. They're skating all over the place. It's kind of trying to get the cattle back together. But you touched about that U8 intro group. Yeah. I coached – actually, it was a coach for – my only head coaching job I've ever had was with the Hockey Factory Junior Bears team as a squirt last year. Yep. As you talk about that, those younger kids, you have to be engaged all the time or they're going to lose it, which is it was an awesome experience for me. It was actually my first real coaching thing and yep. drawing practice plans up. But being out there to go teach the basic skills and to have fun with it was such an awesome feeling. Like the smiles on the bench – kids are just excited to be there it was such a cool experience to do that team and i learned a lot from that age group and those kids and though keeping those kids are the ones that are engaged is probably the funnest part about coaching uh coach rex when he coaches with us i think we were coaching a hockey factory team and they i, I believe they might have been u8s or coming out of u8s and i i remember sitting there getting in the car after the game with Re coach with rex and i was I remember being like well how'd it go and he looks at me he's like and he brought up the kid's name. He's like, that kid knows like every song from the eighties. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? He goes, he's like, so I'm trying to get Rex is telling the story by trying to keep kids engaged in the game. You know, you know, cause you know, like, you know, you ask them what you see and stuff like that. And the kids, they you know, like you want, you want them there in the game. And then some music started playing overhead. So Rex goes, you know what the song is? And then the kid, the kid turned around and he's like, yeah, summer of 69, man. <laughs> like you're like, what? <laughs> Like, and then, and then the kid was able to, you know, like every song that would come on the PA system and, and he'd look down the bench, like, what is it? And the kid would be like, every rose has its thorn. Like, you know, That's like, pretty funny because the one turn my coach with this team was Baby Shark, the song came on. I think every kid, both benches started dancing and singing. Even the play was going on. And I was like, <laughs> I had no clue what to do. I was like, you got to keep playing hockey. Like the refs had to blow the play down. 
Yes, it's uh, it's funny because that 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 song right now is on repeat in my house. I have a I have a one year old daughter that just loves that song. So if it came on right now, I'm pretty sure I'd be jamming to it too. <laughs> I was like trying to, I was like panicking on the bench. I was like, guys, we got to keep playing. Everybody's just dancing. I was like, okay, I, this, there's no stop at this. Yeah, that's what know, makes it fun. I will also tell you, there's no way you didn't, you were moving on that bench either. No. Oh, not come a on. You know I was still the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, baby do, 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 whatever anyway um we're, we're wrapping this up a little bit but give me one piece of advice that you have to a youth hockey parent so a youth hockey parent um one thing that i've always been lucky that my parents have done in the past and i've done my whole career is let the coaches coach from mm-hmm. the back from the ice don't be throwing hand signals out there for kids because once again now they're distracted now you're distracted. Now it's kind of a snowball going down a hill. So let the coaches coach and let them do their job. And then after the game, you can have your conversation with your kids. And I think being able to step away and not have, we've talked before, parent coaches, non-parent coaches, just let the coach coach because that's what he wants to do. And that's why he's there or she's there. And that's the great thing about hockey is you only have one or two coaches on a bench. Yep. So let your kid get coached by the coach during the game. Don't be throwing hand signals out like that, but just enjoy watching your son or daughter play. Isn't it? Isn't it? Okay. And I know, I know that there are a lot of parents out there that do throw out hand signals. <laughs> okay. I can't tell you as a coach, anything that is more annoying that when, as I'm trying to talk to your kids in between periods, you're in the background at giving whatever signal you are giving to your kid, whether it's move your feet, shoot, pass. And as a coach, we see this, right? Kids staring and, up like this and... Oh my gosh, I cannot, if I have, if I, you know, it got, I think it's, for me as a coach, it's gotten worse since I've started coaching. Like I, I had a team this year where I, I honestly think 50% of my kids were like looking at their parents, like either at some point after a shift or some point in between periods <clears throat> or whatever it may be, they're looking at mom or dad for a signal. And I can't tell you how annoying it is and how, how much it can confuse skaters, right? Like, yes. like you don't see Sidney Crosby's dad in the stands anymore throwing signals to him on the bench, right? No. Like, it's, it's ridiculous because, like you said, let the coaches coach. You don't know what we're telling the kids, right? And then even if you do think you know what we're telling the coaches, there might be something in the game plan that's changed that we're trying to change, right? Yes. And we're trying to get your skater to do. And and that's the other thing, too, is sometimes you don't understand, like, you, you might understand what position your kid's in, but you don't understand the, the role they're at within that position, which you're trying to coach from the stands, but it's, it's totally counterproductive to what we're trying to do on the bench. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, and talked about positionless hockey these days pretty much yeah and you you, like and that's the thing is like it's not just that that's counterproductive but like you're hurting the team right you're yes and i i I just sometimes shake my head i mean we had one team this year and i think i talked about this in a previous interview but um i noticed that the stands were on one side of the rink and And the the opposite side of it yeah so like as i was given the first you know in between the first period I'm I'm ta- I'm on the ice, right? And I'm drawing up my board. And the next mm-hmm. thing I know, there's half the heads are in the stands. And I turned around and looked real quick. And I swear there was about 10 dads in there, like, you know, like pick it up, you know, shoot more. And then one, one of the dads, the- yeah, one of the dads is like, hi, shoot high. And I'm like, and I was like, oh my gosh. And, you know, it's, it was the four dads in the back row leaning on the railing. And each one of them were giving signals. And it's like, oh my gosh. So that next period, I made all the kids go out on the ice and take a knee. Yeah, like, so they couldn't I remember look. exactly what game you're talking about. Too. Yeah, and we had to do it like the entire tournament. It was like every time the parents would, with you know, whatever side of the ice the bleachers were on, we we had to doctor it. So, and it was all because like the parents were giving misinformation to the kids. Like, we wanted the kids to shoot the puck low because we noticed the goalie was giving up a lot of rebounds. Yeah, yeah. he let one go in high. But the next thing you know, dad's telling you to shoot high when I'm telling you shoot for rebounds because that's where the goalie's having a, a hard time, like you know, tracking these shots. But you know, dad told you to do that, and that's the thing is, eventually, who do you think is going to win that argument, dad or coach? Coach, it's be dad. eventually, 
it, it, well, dad will win in the beginning, but eventually coach is going to win in the end because then the coach is just going to stop putting your kid in the positions to shoot or something crazy like that. So Especially as they grow older, like you said, Cindy Crosby is not looking at his dad. <laughs> no, right? Like it's, and you know, and there's, a, it, there's a point where it's just like you got to let the players play and, you know, you got to let kids learn on their own. And you can't sit there and try to micromanage your kid from the, from the, from the bleachers. And uh, I mean, I mean, I, I will tell you, my parents gave me hand signals, like, and I, <laughs> it drove me wild even getting them. And sometimes you're like, mom, you don't even know what I'm talking about right now. Like, I, I got to do this, but yeah, completely opposite side of it. So, yeah. And that's the thing, too, is you just really don't know what's going on in the game to sit there and accurately tell your kid what to do. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. We play this game for the kids to make mistakes and learn from them, not for you to sit there and try to fix their mistakes from the stands, right? Like I said, nobody's perfect. Yeah. Like, you got to yeah. be able to roll with the punches and not let your players make mistakes. Let your kids learn from those mistakes. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to make <laughs> them a better hockey player in the long run, though. Exactly, exactly. Um, but last question we're going to get here is um, give me some advice that you would give to a 12 or 13 year old coach, Maddie Taylor. Well, well, I've been listening to all your interviews you've had, so yeah. uh, I've done some pretty good ones. Um, well, for me growing up, I guess I, I was lucky enough. I was just good enough to make the teams. I was yeah. a pretty hockey player um, doing a good job in games. So I kind of got content and stopped working. I just had to show up and I knew I was playing, which yep. was a terrible trait for me to have. I paid for it in the long run. Um, mm -hmm. But if I could go back to 12, 13 year old Maddie Taylor, it'd be just work hard every practice, every shot, every ice off, off ice training. Mm -hmm. Do the small things. Don't never get content because you never know what little Jimmy's doing down in California or Minnesota. There's always going to be someone working harder and better. So you want to be that top guy. You got to earn that spot. And I know it's a pretty generic answer, but. That's the one thing. If I could go back, I'll just work harder every day. Um, yeah, get better it's, every day. Yeah, and that's one of the things too is that <clears throat> sometimes you know, and we've we've traveled quite a bit, and we we haven't seen you know like all over North America, but we've we've you're from Alaska, so you have that knowledge, and you know I'm from Michigan and stuff like that too. And the one thing that I always thought was great was I had a you know, or as a coach, you have a perspective of. You know, they say like, you know, being a, you know, a big fish in a small pond or whatever it may be. And sometimes you might be the best kid in your age group, in your association, right? Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, sometimes that can lead to complacency. And that's where sometimes I think if kids realized how many skaters that were in the North America, that they wouldn't become complacent, you know, just by being the best in Northeast Wisconsin, right? Once they realize that, hey, like, just because you're the best in Northeast Wisconsin, that doesn't mean anything like i made a player development camp for the north uh, northwest and we went down to california it was my pretty much my first time trying out outside of state of alaska and i was like yeah. holy cow there's some good hockey players here it, it was a total shock to me i was like i'm maybe not that good anymore like it kind of got into my head right away too yep because and that's and that's one of the things that's really unfortunate sometimes as, as you know skaters that you're constantly always making the a team right and it becomes easy and you don't see who's chasing you, right? Like, yeah. and that's the thing is like, or excuse me, it's not that you don't see who's chasing you, but you, you're not chasing anybody. And I love the kids. And I think it's better for kids to constantly be chasing kids, right? Like if yes. you will know that someone's better than you, like then you know you're constantly going to have to work to catch them. If you're not going to, if if you think you're the best and you start becoming complacent out there as a player, and you're not striving to catch anybody, then then you're not going to continually be, you know, what you could be, right? There's um, always a next step to go. Yeah, like oh man, like that's that's the biggest thing out there. And it's one of the things that's like spring hockey helps with at younger ages, and you know, tier one, it yeah. really opens up kids' minds to like there's more to hockey than just what's in Northeast Wisconsin or just what's in the Midwest, and you know, because you can even be the best player in the Midwest. And then you don't even get drafted in the NHL, right? You don't get the you know, Division One or whatever it may be. You're not even gonna look, maybe. Yeah, like, and that's the thing kids don't realize. Like, everything is everything is so large. I mean, like, you look at Central Scouting, right? You could be the number one overall ranked player in North America, but there could be a hundred people from Europe that are better than you, and you don't even get drafted in the first round. Like, you might be going the third and fourth round. Yeah, and too, and it's it's perspective. It's about understanding that. Like you always and always have to be getting better, and I, and I know this is a cliche that I use it to with my kids all the time. But like 
I always say to kids, like, don't work hard and compare yourself to the kids next to you. Like, just be better than you were yesterday. That's it. Right? Which is a great like, way to play. Yeah. Like, you can't sit there and, and focus on, uh, I mean, if you can focus on someone that is probably better than you, that's not bad. But but if you feel that you might be at the top of your game, just focus on being better. And that's one of the things I make. I think that makes like Sidney Crosby, McDavid, and Ovechkin. A lot of these kids, guys have been good for so long, is that they haven't had anybody to compare themselves to, right? They mm-hmm. like who's who's honestly Sidney Crosby to compare himself to? Like, oh, I got to catch this guy. He's better than me. But like, you know, for what fifteen years he hasn't really had anybody. But he still pushes himself every day, and that's yeah, why he's all still he cares about is being better than who he was yesterday. That's it. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's and putting more work than most players are. And yeah, he's the best player in the world, supposedly. Yes, and that's the thing I you tell kids like, and that's the other thing too with kids. They're so young and they don't realize that uh, you know, like other kids might get mature faster and grow more, and that might lead them to like be able to run faster. But it, it all evens out, and you can't sit there and focus on Johnny who's just matured a little bit faster because you don't know what's going to happen when you start maturing. And then yeah. you, yeah. And then as you start to mature, you're going to see your, you know, your abilities go up, and because things are going to become easier. But in the meantime, if you just stuck to just being better than you were yesterday, you're fine. Like you're, yeah. you're good. It's a great way to play the game and get better at the game. Oh yeah, it's it's a lot more fun too. Like right, just you know, you got to be better than you were yesterday. So. And the, I had the great feeling when I started working harder to get better and get to that next level of hockey that achievement though when you just had a good workout or a good skate you're like that feels good like it might have sucked during the skate or the workout but after you're like that felt really good yes and that's the other thing too is i it's another trait i've seen really good hockey players have a lot is that they love getting better on their own right yes like as you get older and if you want to be a good player and if you're a parent out there wondering if your kid really wants to get better ask them when they went to work out did they have fun doing it Right. Yeah. Because the really good players out there will tell you they enjoyed it. Right. Coach tells them to shoot 100 pucks. World, too. Yeah. Like, coach says shoot 100 pucks. So there's some kids who go out there and they shoot 100 pucks, but they do it like begrudgingly. Right. They're like, ah. But then you have some kids who get to shoot the 100 pucks and it was fun. Right. So, you know what? I'm going to shoot 200 now. So they shoot 200 more. And those are the traits I found that have successful hockey players that lead them to like long term success, not just short term. Right. But it's that ability to sit there when they're home and they want to get better is that they, they love they love to do it, right? And yeah, it's, it's not just them. and it's not just, oh, I want to get better, I want to have a better shot. It's like, well, I want to get a better shot, I want to be smarter, I want to do this. And it's like doing the things away from the game that also help them too, right? Like yeah. um, and that's what I, I I say to kids, like just have fun and being like have fun and working hard. And like it is fun. You can do things by yourself that's gonna make yourself a better hockey player and you enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Yeah, it is, and it's fun. And like you said, there will become a certain point where you get done with that workout and you'd be like, you know, you like you finally sit down and you're like, that was fun. Like, <laughs> like that was that was a good Let's workout. Do that tomorrow. Yeah, like it's you know what? I'm gonna do it tomorrow, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it a little bit more harder too. So but um that's all the questions I have for you. I just wanna say thanks for coming on on late notice too. I really do appreciate it and um, you know, do you have any last things to add before we uh, end this? I don't. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, excited to get the next season rolling. Hopefully this, all this stuff ends soon. We can back down the ice. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping it's going to be, be pretty quick here. I think, I mean, I'm getting antsy to get back to the rink and, you know, I've like it's on since the first week of March and it's driving me nuts. This yeah, like this is my busy time right now. Like where I, you know, we're we're skating a lot. We got tryouts. We got you know teams. We got tournaments, things like that. Um, you know, those were the fun times. And like that, you know, not having our skates on for the last eight weeks has been it's been rough. <laughs> like, I'm a scared to put them on, honestly. Oh man, you know, I almost I thought about getting my first pair of rollerblades recently just to you know get out there and get going. I could not but, see you doing that. Why? Why is that? I just don't see you doing that. Oh. Well, now I'm going. Now I'm going to do it, Maddie. So I'd love to see a picture of it. <laughs> uh, we'll see. But I just want to say thanks again, and um, 
everybody else, uh, on Wednesday we have Coach Greg Cron from the Milwaukee Junior Admirals and the Victor's Hockey coming on. And then Friday after that, we're having one of my other good friends uh, on the show, Tom McDonald. He was awarded the USA Hockey Adult Member of the Year last year. He is a fantastic guy. Um, I think you guys are going to love both interviews you have coming up for you on Wednesday or Thursday. So make sure to check back on those at noon on each of those days. And uh, Maddie, once again, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck and stay safe out there. Thanks, Ryan. Yep.